Hello, my name is Alan James, and my presentation is on the learning tools interoperability. Uh, our agenda for today, I'll go into a little bit about learning tools interoperability, or LTI. Uh, we'll go through the history of LTI, uh, the basic specifications, uh, technologies that can be used in its development, the benefits of its use, I'll also walk you through a scenario of a user connecting through an LTI application, and we'll go through some of its use uh, in education. Uh, so what is Learning Tools Interoperability? It was created as a tool to standardize the creation of content between learning management system platforms, uh, such as Blackboard, Canvas, or Moodle. When these platforms were first developed, each of them uh, had their own way of incorporating custom content so that developers could create applications within the programs and utilize them. Uh, the downside of this is uh, with, with each of these platforms, they're widely used across various institutions everywhere. So developers would have to uh, make sure that they created a application for each of these if they wanted to target uh, everywhere. And even if their application was only doing the same thing across all three, uh, they all have their own specifications, different programming languages which could be used, and it just made for a very complicated mess. So uh, LTI was created to allow functionality of learning technology to be delivered by a variety of platforms. In 2008, it was developed as a Google Summer of Code project, uh, with version 1 being released in 2010. Version 1.1 was released in 2012, and the current version, 2.0, was released in 2014. Uh, basic specifications, it involves two separate parts. There's a consumer, which is the service which utilizes the tool. Uh, the consumer provides user information and context to the provider. It provides authentication, and it also keeps track of what type of user uh, is accessing uh, the LTI. It's Whether it's a learner or a <clears throat> teacher or any other uh, classification of user, which an LMS may have, um, it keeps track of that, and the LMS is the consumer. Uh, the provider provides the service to the consumers. It can either be on the same server or it can be on a completely different server, allowing for a number of different uh, development options. Technologies which can be used in the development includes uh, PHP, which I've worked on uh, creating an LTI in, uh, as well as C Sharp, C++, Python, Java, or any language which can be used to create a dynamic web page. because uh, at the base of it, that's what you're doing. You're creating a dynamic web page that fits a certain style. <clears throat> uh, some of the benefits of using these tools, uh, developers are able to write a single application as opposed to an application for each LMS uh, which they're targeting deployment on. Uh, they're also able to use their favorite language. They're not restricted by uh, languages that might be specific to LMSs or smaller languages and uh, standards which the LMSs specify for their development. Uh, admins of systems, such as the admins of ASU's Blackboard, like it better because it makes deploying applications easier. Prior to this, they would have to go through quite a bit of configuration uh, to get any new applications set up in the Blackboard. It could cause some downtime. With, with LTI, they're able to uh, interface with these applications as they're on separate servers, which allows uh, for very limited or no downtime. Uh, students, it makes it easier because instead of having to log in to a separate system for each uh, application that they're trying to use, this links all of the applications which within the LMS, allowing the students to log into their LMS, take a link to the assignment that they have to take in whatever the application may be, and complete the assignment there. And teachers uh, have the ability to uh, link new applications easily, and they have instant access to those applications uh, once they have. Uh, some benefits of the use, it uh, once again only allows the students to keep track of one login. All of the authentication is handled upfront by the consumer, uh, which simplifies development of providers. And that allows the developers to really focus on the provider 
and to focus on uh, the lessons and the learning that they want to provide to the students as opposed to heavy authentication. Um, and they can create applications that work across the broad variety of learning management systems that are out there. <clears throat> so here's a little walkthrough of an LTI session uh, from Blackboard from a student's perspective. Uh, you have the student who uh, logs in, which accesses the link on the LTI. <clears throat> Blackboard sends the post information to the server that hosts the LTI service, and the provider sends the website back to Blackboard. And Blackboard is then able to uh, render it in an iframe and present it to the student. The student interacts with the LTI server directly through the course of completing an assignment through the iframe. And then once they've completed the assignment, the provider sends any grade information that may be left over back to Blackboard. Um, in education, uh, it is supported by Blackboard, Canvas, and Moodle as well as uh, large education content providers uh, such as Pearson and McGraw-Hill have uh, not only uh, created their own course content, but they uh, have developer content uh, references and information uh, to help the developer community in creating new uh, LTI applications. Um, here is the list of references which I made uh, to uh, put together this presentation. If you're interested in learning more about these LTI uh, uh, specifications, these links are fantastic. I actually uh, was able to utilize this IMS Global uh, links here at the top to begin work on my own LTI application. And that's all that you would really need uh, to begin your initial work in that area.